Okay, so uh, last week, uh, Ted and I, well, that was two weeks ago, Ted and I, we, we, we talked about um, uh, yeah, information security management system, document control, and uh, so I hope you, you, were, you were also able to uh, attend uh, th those, those courses. And uh, uh, we're, we're coming up with a new lineup in the next uh, seven weeks, so watch out for that. And I think uh, ju just to re uh, reiterate what Mike mentioned, we're also coming up with full versions of these webinars no? because we can also talk about, we can only talk about uh, uh, the, the, the gist or the summary of these topics. But if you'd really want to learn more uh, in a rather much more in-depth uh, uh, discussion of these courses, we're doing full-blown courses for one day. So uh, Mike will be, I'm very sure, communicating with you, sending you links on how to register to this uh, Full courses, and of course, uh, uh, we give certificates of completions for that. By the way, so do not forget to fill up the exit polls at the end of this webinar, as mentioned by Mike. We also wanted to know what your thoughts are. If you have suggested topics, uh, anything related to management systems, to ISO standards, we would be very glad to uh, bring it up here in this weekly webinar. So I think, uh, Ted, you're all set. Yes. It is oh, a bloody oh. red uh, slide uh, starting off the day. <laughs> Red. Okay, uh, so let me now turn this over to Ted. Good morning, Ted. Yeah. Okay, so thank you, Jock, for the introduction. No? Um, for today, I will be sharing with you uh, some uh, insights, uh, better understanding uh, regarding corrective action. Now, I, I do believe I need to know muna in the beginning kung where you stand regarding corrective action. Ah, para lang maintindihan natin kung why do you need to learn corrective action. May, may I know lang no, ah, kung kayong mga umaten ay nag-implement ah, ng ISO kaya you see the need for corrective action. Ah, yan po natin tanong, di ba? So, is anybody here, kahit sabihin lang yung yes, Chuck, Max, no? Uh, implementing ISO all already, di ba? Certified sa ISO. It doesn't matter kung ano number na yan. Ayan, meron tayo. Si Marie Estrella, ay Estrella, ayan. Ayan, si Richie Carol Escanilla, ayan. Ayan, ayan. Yes, ayan. So, ayan. So, ang understanding ko is, that's why you attended ililinaw natin kung bakit at papaano diba, gumagawa tayo ng corrective action. Now, if you are in the road of implementing best practices para sa organization ninyo, no, uh, naturally, part of the mandatory requirements would be a uh, continual improvement. Meaning, yung tinayunin yung system dapat sa haba ng panahon Gaganda ng gaganda ang takbo. Oh, importante siyempre yun. Uh, old school mentality na yung kapag nakuha mo yung ISO, pinababayaan mo na. And then, hanggang doon na lang yun. Most old school implementers actually made that mistake. Reason why, kapag once certified ka na, after 2 to 3 years, binabawi yung certificate. Kasi hindi na in-improve. Hindi na inalagaan yung management system at inayo. Now, that is a common, common problem with organizations trying to uh, maintain yung ISO certification. Remember, the benefits ng ISO certification no, is um, image ng reputational marketing advantage. So, diba? so kung ngayon taon, certified ka sa ISO, tapos madiscover ng mga customers po next year, hindi na, it does actually say a lot about how the organization operates naman kasi. Malinaw naman din yun. Reflection yun. Kaya nga yung pag-certify sa ISO, talaga voluntary yun. <laughs> you have to decide whether if you go into it, panindigan mo na yan sa haba ng panahon, di ba? Kasi kung pinabayaan mo, if you reflect na yung organization ninyo, doesn't care about the discipline na ina-adapt nyo. Now, to be specific, yung sa Dasan Care na yan, paano kung ISO 9001 yan? Quality. Ibig sabihin, yung quality ng products and services nyo, sumasama din. Kasi nawala naman kasi yung certificate. Ah, hey. Now, 
ang corrective action is a mandatory requirement of the law. So, it was intended para lahat ng mga problems, issues, ayan ha, incidents, mga opportunities of improvement, di ba? Tawag nyo ba na UFI as another fact, no? So, it's a naming convention. Um, uh, ma maaayos niya. Best effort din naman yun. So it's not a perfect process where you get an expectation na okay na lahat at the end. No? Hindi naman ganun. But the, the uh, corrective actions um, is actually part of the continual improvement section section 10, baso na lang mga kabasong ISO yan, of the IOS, ISO standard. No, that's across all standards. Diba? All standards were revised to have the same format. But the challenge here is maraming may corrective action na sinuyo, hindi naman nila ginagamit ng mabuti. Uh, so we're looking here at a well-placed system but not a well-used system. Okay. Now, common problems talaga niyan is Akala nila kasi mandatory requirement lang naman kasi yung corrective action na yan. Tinatayo yan. No, di ba? As a matter of fact, kung i-audit ko kayo, for example, at hanapit yung mandatory, I am sure dinocument na niyo at nakasalang na sa manual ninyo. The problem is kapag tinatanong ko kung nagagamit, ginagamit, gano'ng kadalas gamitin, nagiging problem. Kung napansin nga ninyo eh, and I do believe, baka ginagawa din ninyo. Nang foremost entity na gumagamit ng corrective action sa inyong office, ay si internal audit lang. Okay. Let's be truthful about it. Sa lahat ng pinunta akong organization, a vast majority nila ang gumagamit lang ng corrective action ay si internal audit lang. Hindi hindi proseso ng internal audit ang corrective action. Para malinaw tayo ron. Kaya nga yan nilagay sa section 10 for continual improvement. E eh, sariling domain objective siya. The clause objective. Okay, dahil, start with the It was intended to address lahat ng dinaanan ng system ninyo regardless kung ito ay non-conformity o oh, just an uh, operational issue, di ba? Na kapag dapat yan ay i-correct, nandaan ka sa section 10 na yan kung saan mahanap mo yung corrective action. Ngayon, dahil dyan, nagko-confuse ang mga implementers kung sino ba dapat susulat yan. Lalo na yung famous question na, sino ba may-ari niya prosesong yan? <laughs> di ba? Ang dami ko nang nakita ng manual eh, ang naging may-ari internal audit. Eh. 'Yun ang problema doon. Yung corrective action process niya, ang may-ari niya is yung management system. So basically, operational procedure 'yan ng management officer niyo. Kung kayo ang quality management officer, sa iyo 'yan. <laughs> Hindi 'yan sa internal audit team mo. Ay. This is your mechanism kasi para i-improve. Oh. oh, maganda yan. Comment na yan. Ang nagmamayari ay si document controller din. Hala, magandang input yan. Kung hindi din ang ng internal audit yan, si document controller ang umako niyan. <laughs> okay. Now, si document controller ay one of the users niya. Ah, hindi siya process owner niya. Ang ownership ni document controller would be the famous document change control procedure. O, di ba? Iba yun. Yung proseso to manage changes on documentation requirements of the system. Ah, yun ang tamo ngayon nun. Now, o yun, quality assurance officer. Well, the, I assume it's just an assurance officer. But if you have an entire team, you have the assurance officer, the control officer, the compliance officer, and siyempre the management officer, owner of the entire system. Regardless, the process is part of the 
operational requirements of the management system, meaning the basic six mandatory procedures of an ISO is actually owned by the management officer. In the end. Now, most organizations are young because of the situation, having a challenge in implementing, struggling in trying to have a uh, or use, no, determine the right the by implementation of the interactive action. Now, let us uh, put in a few understandings. Sa ISO minention, minention to ah, that corrective action is a good way to help the directives of continual improvement. Pero maraming ibang bagay na makakatulong. And one of them is just your plain correction. But, but, there's a difference. Correction is not corrective action. <laughs> By definition ng implementation sa ISO, a correction is kung saan may nakita kang problema o issue o situation na hindi na maganda. At agad-agad, inayos mo. Inayos mo. Parang, eh, ito sira. Kapit ko. O, manda na. Ganun lang. Kinorek mo. Okay. But the problem between that and corrective action, the, the, the difference is that corrective action to actually dig deeper. Corrective action wants, yes, same goal, to fix yung know, problem and issues, correct, or that conform. Pero, gusto niya makasigurado na sa future, maiiwasan ang nangyari ulit yan, or hindi na nangyari ulit yan. The challenge of implementers, the struggles, Basta paano mo mahuhuli yan? Kasi kung ayos ko ng ayos at every year ulit ng ulit yan, technically speaking, hindi kayo nag implement ng effective corrective action system. <laughs> yun ang pinapakita nung galaw na yun. Now, it is siyempre understood na every problem, every issue, every non-conformance and non-compliance, kailangan i-correct. Oh, understanding yun. But, naturally, the best solution is ayaw mo na at matanggal mo na yung problema mo yan para hindi naman yung problema yan. So, corrective action is actually the best solution because it ensures na hindi na yan babalik at hindi na yan ulit. Now, na natin nakalagay sa section 10. Now, I generalize this para it, it fits the pattern across all the ISO. Regardless kung anong number niya. Sabi sa requirement ng ISO na yung organization will select opportunities for improvement and implement the necessary actions para ibigay yung hinihingi ng disiplinang objective. In this case, in 9,000 yan, quality, enhance customer satisfaction, and quality of product and services. According to section 10, we need actions para i-improve yan, i-correct yan, no, diba? i-prevent na manyari yung mga problems na yan, bawasan yung sakit na maibibigay ng mga problema niyan, and ultimately, pagandahin yung performance ng inyong system at kayo. So nakita mo, improvement can include correction and corrective action. Uh, as stated in the standard, and I do believe, sana nabasa ninyo. <laughs> Under section 10, yung nakikita din, yung non-conformity and corrective action. Medyo clarify natin yan para sa matagal nang nakakaalam ng ISO. Because prior to the current version, it was actually written corrective and preventive action. Uh, and preventive yun. Baka tanongin nyo, ba't sa napunta yung preventive na yun? Mamaya explain ko yan kung saan pumunta yan. <laughs> okay. Now, sabi ng standard, kapag may non-conformity, kailangan mag-react ka in non-conforming mga <laughs> at kailangan bigyan mo agad ng aksyon para ma-eliminate mo yung cause of the non-conformity. Now, a non-conformity can crop up kahit kailan. 
hindi naninili ng panahon na eh, kaya nga lang conformity yan. Kunyari, bukas, bigla na lang yung mga produktong lumabas sa planta mo, eh, mga madaling mabulok na. O, oh, ganun. O, hindi. After a week, yung mga in-order sa inyo ng mga equipment, eh, lumalabas, hindi umaandar. Hindi mo masabi, hindi ka pipilihan ng panahon yan. Now, because of that, hindi yan obvious yung napupunta sa kamay ni audit or ni document controller. Hindi na no say. Yan, kapag nag-arise yan, kailangan magamit agad. Kaya nga ang users ng corrective action, users ay gagamit. Ay lahat ng nasa ilalim ng scope ng implementation ng PMS mo. Doesn't matter kung maliit kang tao sa loob. Kung may nakita kang problema sa trabaho mo, a process, trabaho mo ha, a process that supports the provision of uh, services and products to your end users. Oo, mag-file ka kaya ng corrective action, may problema. Iusin mo yan. Kaya nga, importante yung maintindihan kung saan yan, basta sa standard sinasabi, kailangan gawin. And don't forget, it is an ISO requirement, mandatory, it has to be well documented and records retained and maintained. Okay? So now, Corrective action is a process that requires na mahuli ninyo yung dahilan because of kung bakit yung non-conformity na yan or yung problem na yan or yung issue na yan ay nangyayari. Then, yung mga magiging actions mo dapat inayos, pinigilan, o sa future, hindi na niya pwede mabigyan ng paraan na mangyari ulit yun. Ah, okay. Yun actually ang kailangan tinayo ninyo. Tignan mo yung ganda nun pag gano'n ang ginawa mo. Sa haba ng panahon, kung lahat ng kusot ng inyong opisina ay naayos mo. Ha? Eh di gaganda ng gaganda yung takbo ng inyong opisina sa haba ng panahon. Si bawat problema ay naayos mo, hindi na uulo. Aba, hindi mo naman may ayaw nun. <laughs> okay? Yan, maglinaw din tayo para yung terms na may encounter mo with the corrective action. Yung non-conforming. Oo. Alam mo, dahil sa non-conforming niya, kaya akala nila, kaya internal audit din. <laughs> Oo naman, user din si internal audit niya. No? Siya kaya makakahuli nung lahat ng non-conforming niya. So, a non-conforming product or process is... Uh, what is the result of a product or a process no, na hindi ibinibigay yung expectation no organization's requirements or no client's expectation. Okay. Specifications yan na hindi in the end ng inyong mga end users or end clients. Okay. Yan. Now, a correction, siyempre, like I mentioned earlier, is refers to a instant repair, an ayos, a rework or adjustment. Uh, naturally, it intends to fix whatever makita mo agad-agad. Para preferably yung maandal ka na agad-agad. Hindi yung sira, tapos hindi mo naman magamit sa haba ng panahon. Kung hindi mo magamit na mabuti yan, then hindi aandal ang kumpanya mo na mabuti sa haba ng panahon. Okay. Now, corrective action. Eto na yung action kung saan yung nakita mo kusot, ayusin mo. Ayan. By eliminating the root cause. Now, preventive. Saan ang galing yan? Ideally, ang preventive action kasi is an action wherein kapag may nakita kang maaring mangyaring masama, pipigilan mo na yan para hindi makasama sa inyo. Kaya ang nga preventive ang tawag din. But most corrective actions, kung inayos mo yung tamang cause, hindi na uulit yun. Kaya inherent ang preventive action sa corrective action. Therefore, isa na lang yan. Corrective action na lang yan. Now, in writing a corrective action, may mga vital information na kailangan maproduce yung process na yan. Ang mga dapat maging components niyan would be the related information or data 
diba? relevant to the non-conformance ng mga proseso at produkto ninyo. Which means yung information ng problem, issue, ng non-conformity. Kailangan malinaw yon kung what exactly ba yung nangyari na hindi dapat nangyari. O, diba? What exactly ba yung nakasamang yan? Another component would be because yung dahilan. Ang bagay naman sa opisina, hindi basta-basta ganun na nangyari na walang dahilan. Kasama yan sa inyong action report. The other one is the actual um, listing of actions, your plan of actions regarding how to correct or prevent yung na-identify na na non-conformance dun sa inyong system. Other information needed by the report is to validate or to verify if the actions na sinabi nyo ang gagawin nyo, nagawa at at nakatulong kung effective. Malay mo, kaipak naman pala yung ginawa nyo. This gives the opportunity na mag-reset ulit kayo ng bagong corrective action kasi baka naman mali yung pagkakahuli mo ng report. Communication information. Corrective actions are not for a single individual lang sa entire life cycle niya. It involves people from informing the end user na probably apektado ng problem or non-conformity all the way hanggang management about the status of the system and yung mga bagay-bagay na mga nagkaroon ng problema na inayos nyo. That's why kasama yung resulta ng mga Decision at saka yung input ng management through management review regarding your action. And lastly, the follow-up plan. Some actions are short-term, some actions are long-term. If they happen to be short-term, di yung follow-up mo mabilis. Like, oh, bukas gamay yan, bukas titignan ko yan. Follow-up pa rin yun, may bilang yung panahon. But naturally, depending on the capability and the resources available, some actions might be longer. So this is where you have a follow-up plan to check, monitor yung iyong mga actions. Ito nga ayaw maandar. Ito nga nagawa sa haba ng panahon. So, any questions? Ready now yan? Okay. Now, now we have an understanding. Corrective action is a process diba? or a system, whichever you call it. Diba? GISO never mentioned the word process anyway. Para malinaw tayo about that part. <laughs> diba? So, a corrective action is a process or a system that is used to achieve continual improvement. The intent, siyempre nun, is to have continual improvement with the directives niya for the efforts of improving lahat ng mga proseso ninyo, lahat ng resources ninyo, sa lahat ng produkto at servisyo na ibinibigay ninyo. At continual improvement eh hindi naman kailangan one time big time bigla, although mamaari naman ito. But, it can be also incremental two time. Pwede nyo hati-hatiin yan, like I mentioned earlier, long-term plan ba? Pwede na. Okay, now, ano ang mga steps to perform corrective action? Now, what you see here is a simple seven-step approach lang. Siyempre, kayo, you can adapt this or you can slightly revise this based on nature of how your management system operates or probably the nature of the industry ang pinasukan ng inyong organization. But, but, the seven steps here, shows you a direct approach on how to perform corrective action. We have defined the problem, defined the scope, contain the actions, finding the root cause, planning for the corrective action, implementing the action, and later on, this follow yeah. Now, first step, define the problem. You see, marami kayong madidiscover sa inyong organization. To be honest about it, maaaring sabihin ni iba, eh, non-conforming yan. Sabihin ni iba, eh, baka naman problem yan, no issue yan, di ba? O baka naman, 
Kaya siya nagreklamo kasi nakakasama. Ba, you need to validate muna kung tama yung nireklamo sa inyo o yung pinatawag sa inyo o yung pinapatik sa inyo. O importante yun. Kasi hindi lahat na sinasabi ng mga tao sa opisina eh baka naman nakatunayan eh non-conforming o baka naman problema. O, baka from their perception yun o problema. Pero actually nung sinilip mo, ay, hindi naman problema ng kumpanya, problema ng iba, problema ng tagalabas yan, di ba? Hindi naman problema yan, situation lang yan, but doesn't really cause a problem yet, di ba? You need to know kung valid yan bago mo tirahin ng action plan. Kasi in the first place, kung hindi naman problema, problema yan, ba't mo naman bibigyan ng oras at panahon yan? O nakabala ka sa wala. Okay. Kaya lang ang efficiency at effort sa mga yung correct decision. To find the problem, exactly, do initial diagnosis, Do some investigation. Kailangan niya muna kung talaga yan ay true or not. Okay? Next, define the scope. Kapag nabigyan ka na ng valid na uh, non-conformance o ng valid na problem, you need to know kung ano ang kasama dyan sa item na yan. You need to know kung gano'ng kalaki yan. Sabi, may problema tayo. Ano ba yung kasama dyan sa problema ng yan? Sino-sino ba mga, ano ba apektado dyan? Isang department lang ba? Dalawang department? At, oh, lahat ng branches natin? Kailangan mo naman niya. Kailangan naman mo naayos niya kung hindi mo alam mo kung tinamaan. Baka naman inayos mo isang department, hindi mo alam. May lahat ng regional branches ng inyong office, tinamaan. Di ba? For all you know, di ba? You need to define the scope. Having clarity on the scope of ng inyong uh, determined or identified, validated, uh, non-conformance of problem will help you later on uh, build a suitable action plan para i-address yan later. Now, containment action. Oo oh, naman, di ba? The one thing na ayaw mo is nakikita mo na nga may problema at nagkukos na nga ng problem, hinayahan mo pang tumatakbo tuloy-tuloy. Trabaho ng quality control office kaya yan. Kung nakita mo na, o oh, yan sama na nung irusulta nung ating produkto. Lahat ng lumalabas sa planta natin, ang sama na, di ba? Ba't mo ba yan tumatakbo pa rin? <laughs> Kinocontain na yan. Gumagawa ka ng stopgap measures na para yan, hindi na sumama. Tigilan mo muna yan. Tignan mo muna na mabuti yung problema. Huwag mo tayo kumilos, di ba? Tignan muna natin kung anong dahilan yan bago mo palakarin yan. Kasi, iniiwasan mo nga na masira ang inyong Uh, reputation and image di ba? in delivering quality services sa end user client. So, masama niya, ba't may lalabas? Di ba? Eh, talagang trabaho yung quality control officer, oh, itigil niya. Di ba? Kundi, sasama yung ating mga satisfaction service pag naabot sa kanila. Ano yan? Remember, concern mo talaga yan. Now, finding the root cause. The next step natin. Sabi natin ang collective action is intended to look for the cause, the underlying issue. Ano ibig sabihin niyan? Kung sino yung mga roles na naka-assign doon sa collective action and they may vary depending on the nature of the non-conformance or the problem. Kailangan yung collective action analyst nyo, tinuruan nyo ng root cause analysis. Hindi pa pwede yan na tingin ko, yan ang dahilan yan. Tingin mo. Yan ang problema, tingin mo lang yan. <laughs> Anong patunay mo na yan nga yan, di ba? Sa mundo na nga ISO, sinabing i-document yung patunay na record na yan talaga yan. Yung kaya nga mag-perform kayo o mag-adapt kayo ng mga method para kapag nag-root cause analysis kayo, pinakita niyo yung method na ginamit niyo at naging resulta. Common sa organizations yung Five Y, Y Y Y Y Y. Di ba? At the end of the fifth Y, makuha mo yung root cause. Or yung five Y and five wives and one husband. How yung huli actually? And then there are also yung mga isikaw diagram. I'm sure marami na sa inyo na fishbowl diagram yan. Nakabisik yan. Tinuturo ng sa school sa iba yan. Madalas kaya ituro sa training yan ni. Tanong do kung nagamit nyo. To be honest about it, kung nagamit kaya isikaw diagram niya, fishbowl na yan. I-document nyo yan, i-attach nyo sa corrective action report yan kapag yan pinresent mo sa management. Hanapin kaya ng auditor yan. Sabi ng auditor, oh, ito pala yung non-conformance mo. Anong root cause niyan? Sir, nag-fishbone ako eh. Ito lumabas. Asa may fishbone diagram mo? Bakit ang ano? <laughs> Ganun yung kaya kayo nun. <laughs> okay. Now, 
whatever na ginusulta niya root cause na yan, it is a good effort to determine the right cause. And sometimes, siyempre, hindi naman perfect yan. Do not look for perfect solutions for that. So if the first one fails, you're gonna have to try again to do a study. But in the end, whatever naging output niyang root cause analysis na yan, alam mo na po ng cause. Ngayon, pagplanuhan mo na, plan a corrective action. This is where you find the gist of yung corrective action system or process mo. The actual step-by-step yeah, step, step, by step activities, actions na kailangan mo gawin in order to correct yung nakita mo based on the root cause na nahuli mo. You need to identify the resources needed in order for you to perform the action. Kailangan malaman mo kung anong gagawin mo, anong proseso, di ba? Kailangan malaman mo sinong gagawa, sino responsible para dyan, sino dapat ang gumawa nito. And don't forget, action plans are plans. You need schedules, timelines, deadlines. Definitely, hard targets yan. Bawal sa atin ang asa pa asa as soon as pwede. Sige, bawal ka lang yan. Now, ang ganda ng plano mo. Nahirap sa sadong Pilipino, magaling sa plano, wala sa gawa eh. <laughs> And this is where the struggle actually comes, di ba? Pagdating sa mga implementation ng corrective action. Naturally, if you do have a corrective action plan, now is the time to implement the plan. The intent is to fix, di ba? To manage, di ba? To mitigate yung non-conformance na yan. Yung problem na yan, yung bagay na nakakasama sa organization ninyo in terms of quality and provision of service and products nyo. Kailangan i-follow through mo yung plan. Make it happen. Do it. Alam naman ninyo, di ba, yung plan do check act na yan. Ang laki, laki kaya ng do dyan. Di ba? Lalo na yung act. <laughs> yan yan. Action. Susa lang mo. E ano ngayon, hindi ko sigurado, baka mali yung root cause ko. Hindi na susuta kaya ng study mo. Ituin mo. Yun na lumabas eh. Sabi ko naman sa iyo, hindi mo pa perfect yan. Kung masama yan, mag-root cause analysis ka ulit, tapos humuli ka ulit ng bagong action, ganun lang naman yan. Na everything is given the opportunity for improvement. And lastly, follow up plan. The idea here, siyempre, is kapag kayo ay nag-roll out ng actions, kailangan tignan nyo, minsan-minsan, monitor ninyo, kung yung actions ay nagagawa, ginawa, o dapat na-achieve yung end result na dapat nagawa. Okay po, malinaw yan. So, follow up plan. Make sure that your action plans actually do work. This is important. Kasi dito nyo malalaman kung yung denial na nonconformity o problem, in the end, naayos. Baka mamaya yung konti. Denial mo, pero sa dulo niyan, ba't hindi pa ayos to hanggang ngayon? Most cases, people just file it. But in reality, people don't actually fix it. Oo naman, for whatever reasons, di ba? Pag yan nga, sinistematize mo eh. Tool, tool. Bigyan ko yung example. Yung mga ginagamit ng help desk ni IT, o yun. Yun, nag-automatic close ng ticket yun. Kahit hindi pa tapos yung issue, kinuklose na niya yan. Para masabi na yung performance ng ticket management system, maganda. Masama yun. Masama yun. I'm telling you guys to make sure. Huwag ganun. Kailangan mabuo yung cycle na yan. So, kung gagawin mo yan, improvement. Wala. Gumanda na. Umayos na ng konti yung inyong management system pati yung mga proseso, produkto, servisyo ang binibigay sa inyong organization. So that is how you implement corrective action. And there's a few learnings probably on how to do root cause analysis and all the other smaller details of how yung roles nung sa pag-planning, the actual planning development in the process. Eh, kailangan nyo matutunan kung hindi nyo alam. But again, you can learn it on your own naman. Marami namang reading material yun sa internet. So, corrective actions are used when you react to a problem. While preventive, syempre, kung tingin nyo yung maaaring mangyari yan, implement mo para hindi na mangyari. Now, corrective actions. Yan ang importante at sikreto. Maitutulong yan. 
change your management system. Well, regardless if you are certified or not, if you are a practitioner ng best practices, hindi mo nga ka ng corrective action. Just kailangan mo. Uh, why is use corrective action for problems the most effective way to ensure? So whatever yung pangako ng discipline, like quality, yan ang nagbibigay niya. Driving yung continual improvement to finance ng inyong organization. So, do we have any questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Thank you. So far, I think we have addressed uh, those common questions or clarifications, no? Uh, from, from, questions. <laughs> yeah, from, from my end, Ted, uh, maybe I'd like to just emphasize this from my end. Uh, so what, what, what is the fundamental difference between correction and corrective? Ah, ang correction, immediate fix yun. Inaayos mo agad. Sometimes, kapag nag-file ka ng corrective action, may kasamang correction yun ayusin mo agad para umandar agad, hindi maipit yung trabaho. Diba ayaw mo yung, for example, tuloy-tuloy yung pagbigay ng products and services, tapos ayaw mo na i-contain, itigil mo agad-agad, diba? Mm -hmm. Kung pwede naman ituloy yan, ayusin mo lang yung kusot, muna, temporarily, temporary solution yun, correct mo muna. Okay. But then again, itutuloy mo pa rin yung corrective action, which means hahanapin mm -hmm. yung root cause. Alright. So, so it, it appears, of course, na dapat mauna si correction and then after your correction, kasi immediate solution siya no, to the uh, non-performance, uh, then you should do the root cause analysis. Obviously, yeah. in root cause analysis, you need to determine ano ba talaga ang punot dulo nito. And as soon as you uh, have identified the root cause, that's the time that you will have to draft your corrective action. Uh, Having said that, the corrective action should be responsive to the root cause. Uh, that is that is that correct? Oh, and, dapat. Uh, it should address the root cause. Dapat, ha? The, the plan cost. should address the root cause. All right. Uh, so, uh, another another clarification here, Ted, is that uh, lahat ba ng non-conformities ay may, may, may applicable na correction? Or pwede ba, ah. yung iba, walang correction, you go straight to the root cause analysis and then dive straight to the corrective action? Corrections actions. naman. According naman din tayo. So, is kapag nakita mong mga kailangan magamit, magamit siya yung correct ka. So sometimes hindi naman lahat ng ma-discover mo kaya ang lagyan ng correction. O kaya nga kung minsan pumapasok na yung containment, containment, lahat ng ibang dapat mong gawin. Or whatever ang dapat mong pang gawin. You can do that as long as mag-correct ka in the end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sige. Ted, here's a question from uh... Uh, Miss Janice uh, Pinesios of the Misamis uh, Occidental, province yes, of Misamis yes. Occidental. Uh, good, good morning to all of you there uh, from, from uh, Misamis Occidental. Her question is, when is the ideal time to follow up if, uh, if the corrective action actually was effective? Is it oh, after when? a month, year, <laughs> or it depends? Depends on the action plan na din up ninyo. If your action plan... And the end result of the activities nun was an immediate solution. Immediate. Di sy siyempre, di ba? Mabilis yung follow-up. Agad-agad, di ba? Kung kailan yung time implementation mo, yung follow-up mo, hindi ka time na ni-roll out mo yung action plan mo. After, after, agad, di ba? So, hindi naman mahaba. But like I mentioned, some action plans probably might take longer kasi like kailangan may mga resources na wala ka at kailangan pa pi-acquire, di ba? Baka humaba, six months, three months, long-term plans yun. Kung long-term yun, di yung Follow up po, long term din. Ah, ba talaga yun? Sinisigurado right. mong hindi nila kanilimutan yun. Yep. So, uh, th thank you for clarifying that, Ted. So, again, it depends on the uh, duration or the timetables for the corrective action. I think yes. the follow-up question there, Ted, is that, uh, well, I have two here. Who will prepare the corrective action report and who will review and approve the corrective action report? Because I thought of the timetable, who will decide if it's three months, six months, one year? Uh, Ted, please expound on that. Okay, your corrective action report, everybody can use that. Diba? Everybody can use Kaya may form kayo for that. Kapag meron kayong kailangan correct, pupunta kayo sa management system, papipilapan kayo ng form kasi ang owner nga naman yan sa management system. Later on, kung sino yun, depending on the nature, i-identify yun siyempre. May basic investigation diagnosis yan ng management officer ninyo, di ba? At i-assign yan action plan to the people na suitable to address the corrective correction and the corrective action. 
So, kunyari, di siya technology related item, siyempre itutunin nila kay IT. So, diba? Kukuha sila ng representative, representative doon para to help perform the actions. Decide on the actions kung sinakita mo. Papasa yun. Sino pipirma niyan? Oo naman. Pipirma siyempre kung sino yung inassign na ng action plan na gawa na yung action, di ba? Tapos ang magkuklose nun siyempre yung management system pero communicate to doon sa nag-file kung sino yan yung nag-file na okay na to, tinanggap na niya na okay na to. So magsasign up doon siyempre yung nag-request. Alright. So, so just to clarify, Ted, uh, yung person involved uh, meaning the owner of the non-conformance, he or she will be the one to write the corrective action report, right? Oh, or the yes. owner of the audit finding, uh, if it's yes. the audit. Kaya nga, di ba, si internal audit, siya nakahata ng conformance, kinuha lang niya yung form, siya nag-file ng corrective action, di ba? Mm -hmm. Siya nag-file, siya yung user nun. All right. <laughs> and, and, who, and who, again, is uh, uh, responsible in reviewing whether the proposed action plans would be feasible and, and the timetables are realistic. Who, who ah, would and approve that? Kasi ang problema dito, kaya nga kailangan mo muna i-define yung problem. So para malaman mo kung sino may involved to determine, di ba? To assess. <laughs> so depende ulit yun sa nature of the non-conformance. Okay. Pwede kang gumawa ng six committee pa, yan kung gusto mo. Some organizations develop an ad hoc, ad hoc ang tawag dyan. Uh, mm -hmm. May named entity ngayon doon sa listahan ng committee niya. Ngayon, pag related sa kanilang responsibility yung nature of the non-conformity of problem, sila yung magiging members ng committee. Ganon. Pwede yun, pwede yun. Open-ended yan, walang dictate yan kung paano nila yun sa organization niya. Okay. In, thank you, Ted. Thank you for clarifying that. Our, our, our dear participants, in other words, uh, the standard doesn't dictate as to who will write the correction, uh, the corrective action. The ISO standard doesn't uh, prescribe as to who will review. Again, as mentioned by Ted, this is discretionary upon the uh, role or part of the organization. No? So uh, th that's a good suggestion, by the way, Ted. There can be a committee who would review and monitor uh, this corrective action report. Speaking of monitoring, there's a question here from Maria Estela Nacion. Her question is, is it the role of the internal audit team to follow up the status of the action plan for the corrective action? Ah, kasi sila naman kasi ang nag-file ng corrective action. Kaya nagkataon na. Sila na rin yung nagpa-follow up. Pero actually, yung follow up, ang tunay na mag ang magpa-perform nun, yung, quality, yung management system team, yung management officer na magpa-follow up. Mm -hmm. Kakamustahin na niya yan. Dapat. So, which means, sa case ng internal audit, syempre, kasi kasama yung follow-up sa audit plan. Eh. Nagkataon kasama sa proseso nila yan. Kaya, nadatawag ito yung follow-up ng corrective action. Mm -hmm. Pero, yeah. pag hindi nakasama yung internal audit, si management system na magpa-follow-up. Si management system na mag-issue yung corrective action. Oo. Alright. So, uh, that, 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 that's very clear. So, th thank you, Ted. So, again, uh, as mentioned by Ted, uh, Ms. Nasyon, uh, Usually, the follow-through is part of the audit cycle. So take note that the role of the auditors, uh, uh, it doesn't end uh, after you have submitted your audit report, right? You have to make sure that you follow through on those uh, audit yes. findings and ensure that the corrective actions are acted upon, where they effective, and then, of course, you can finally close it. Uh, maybe the, the follow-up question here is, what if you found out during verification that the corrective action was not effective what, what what do you think that uh they found out during verification that the corrective action was really not effective the non-conformance is still ah, there uulitin nila yan so kapag nakita yan isasabihin sa end report ng corrective action niya na issue kasi nga hindi nga success maganda yung resulta based on the follow up then magre-reissue ng bagong corrective wherein magpo-perform ulit ng bagong root cause analysis para mahuli mo yung tamang cause uulit lang uulit yung cycle na yan kasi mahuli mo talaga yun Mm, yes. So, so, so there you go. So, so that's very clear. Until, of course, you, uh, you, you, you resolve the issue. I think uh, we. I have we a question. Eh. I have a question. Yeah, go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go uh, ahead. Which is much better, corrective action or preventive? Ah, para la malinaw. Yung corrective, kino correct na niya derecho yung problem. Yung preventive, may potential lang na magim problem kaya pine prevent mo. Na I mentioned yung corrective ba mas importante because inherently, kasama na ang preventive kapag inaksyonan mo ang corrective. Diba? Pag kinorect mo yung root cause, naturally na, prevent mo na yan from happening again. So in this case, corrective talaga. Dapat. Alright. 
Thank you, Ted. Here's another question, Ted, from Maria Bilian Balbuena. Is it possible uh, that uh, an identified problem cannot be addressed because people who should address it uh, out, is, is outside of the organization, meaning external? Um, uh, and the company serves only as a secretariat of that of this organization. I think I, I know who, who, what organization is this. <laughs> Ted, can, can, can you answer that? Is it is it possible? Again, the question is: Is it possible that an identified problem cannot be addressed because uh, the persons involved are again external to the organization? The term is possible. Oh, naman, it is possible. Sometimes, hindi naman kasi uh, within your relationship with external entity, na malinaw yung pagdating sa corrective actions na involved sila, which is labas talaga sila sa usapan. Pwede, pwede yun. Pwede yung labas sila. Kaya nga pinapaayos yun yung service level management. Ayusin mo kaya yung SLA ninyo. Idawit mo sila. <laughs> Para pag inayos natin, ayusin natin ito together. <laughs> right, right, right. So there you go, Miss uh, Balbuena. I hope uh, uh, we, we were able to you know shed light on, on, on that on that uh, concern of yours. So make sure that you involve them because uh, whether they are internal or external to your system, they are, they are an important part of your QMS, by the way. Take note, it's a system. If one of the components would fail, it would affect the whole system. So, so for me, my take here is that it is, it, it is immaterial, whether it's internal or external. So because they they all play an important part uh, within your system. Um, uh, Ted, I just I just thought of this because uh, I always get this question also as far as corrective action reporting is concerned. Uh, when when would you raise a corrective action report? Because the the understanding here is that you can only raise corrective action report after the internal audit. Can you actually raise uh, corrective action oh, report? Oh, kaya kami mention ko yan eh. Hindi lang si internal audit dapat ang gumagawa niyan. Yan ay open the entire 365 days. <laughs> Kung sino makadiscover ng non-conformity o ng problem na yan, siya na mag-raise niyan. Kasama dapat sa awareness ni quality management system yan. Pinapaalam na, oy, pag nakita mo yung problema, i-report mo kaya. <laughs> Ganun kadali lang yun. <laughs> right. Okay, so I think I hope that's clear no? because uh, most corrective action reports are actually uh, generated uh, uh, during the audit. So it doesn't mean that you should only generate corrective action reports during the audit. As mentioned by Ted, at any time of the day, when there is when there is a non-conformance, for example, all of a sudden there's a spike in your customer complaints. You don't have to wait for an internal audit for that. You can go right away and you know, sit down in a team and do your correction mm, correctly. Uh, it will hurt the organization. All right, so I'm, I'm looking at the chat box. I think we're, 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 we're good. Uh, I think we have answered most of those questions or clarifications. Yes. Uh, so it's uh, 10.05. Uh, I, I think, uh, Ted, uh, th that's it for today. Yes. And, uh, um, thank you very much, Ted, for another fantastic talk on <laughs> oh, no. reporting. Oh, salamat sa inyo lahat. Yes. Salamat sa inyo lahat. Ted is, this has been so busy, actually, uh, despite the, despite <laughs> the lockdown. <laughs> uh, so, matter of fact, Ted, Ted and I uh, has, has been working around the clock on, on, on several projects. And uh, so, so, thank you, Ted. Thank you for, thank you, for your thank time you. today. And um, I hope our participants somehow have uh, uh, gained uh, a little bit of knowledge or understanding on, on, on how to really go about this uh, corrective uh, action uh, reporting. And uh, so let, let me just share with you again, uh, for next week, we are doing this uh, problem solving decision making. This is also for free uh, on June 25. And uh, this is, this is uh, related to, of course, our corrective action reporting. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about how to uh, 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 conduct root cause analysis here from the beginning and, and end of the, of the process. And uh, we'll also talk about uh, uh, decision making here. So we hope to see you there. And uh, do not forget to, of course, go to our Facebook page. All right. And uh, we have placed there all the registration links. Oh, by the way, as mentioned by Mike earlier, we have full-blown courses. So if you wanted a more in-depth discussion, we have one day, two days uh, courses. If, if you choose to do that, you go to our Facebook account, go to the registration link. Uh, and of course, do not forget to like our, our, our page. Uh, we also upload this uh, recording in our YouTube uh, channel. So uh, I think last week we uploaded the foundations of root and latent cause analysis. Uh, we, we're going to upload this webinar as well uh, after seven days. So, so give us time, all right? 
Uh, with that, uh, Pell and I and Mike would like to thank you all. Uh, it's a Friday. Enjoy uh, the rest of, uh, yeah, have a great yeah, weekend, yeah. by the way, and, and stay <laughs> safe wherever you are. Ted, again, thank you very much. Uh, I will uh, see you later. Thank yep. you all, and uh, stay <laughs> safe. Thank you for joining. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.